need help painting any type of pine or needle tree in this video right here i'm going to show you how to tackle trees and oil every time coming at you right now Hey all, Wild for Games coming at you from my creative control playlist where I try to bring you the best tips, tricks, and even continued education just like this right here. We're continuing from our first lesson where we went over the basic shapes and all the fundamentals about trees and we're continuing this in lesson number two. If you haven't seen lesson number one, take a look up in that right hand corner i'll put a link there for you so that way you can see what's going on or look on one of my past playlists but we're going to take everything that we learned from the basics there and we're going to apply it into this video right here this one's all about taking those actions and putting them on the canvas and making a tree that you're going to be happy with so we're going to go over how to apply all what we learned from lesson one into here which means we're going to make a nicely shaped tree we're going to over the colors that you're going to be happy with we're gonna introduce trunks, but just on a small scale, and more importantly, how to get a tree to pop out with highlights. And that's what's gonna make you a very happy tree. So let's go over to our tutorial right now on the canvas, and let's get started. When we start making a happy little tree, we need to concern ourselves with what colors would work best. A lot of us just go straight for sap green because we think green and trees go together. But a lot of times when you're making a tree, you actually need to introduce a lot of different colors into green to get a nice dark bold green so that way you can build on top of it. So a lot of these colors like alizarin crimson, phthalo blue, and van dyke brown being introduced into green will get us a nice dark color. So we wanna make sure we take all of these colors and introduce it into our sap green. To get all these paints mixed, I just scraped it off my brush there and I'm just gonna use my little spade blade here my spatula blade here and just take all this color and just start mixing it right here on this paper plate so that we get a nice dark color for my brush to run into the next thing we want to concern ourselves with is how we actually ap apply paint to the paint brush a lot of us just kind of go like this and think that's enough well it's going to be kind of sparse and you're get, going to get what looks kind of like a uh, a fish bone on your canvas what you want to do is make sure you apply it thoroughly so that way all the bristles are covered you want to make sure you don't have any big blobs like that because that's going to leave blobs out on your canvas what happens on your palette is almost as important what happens on your canvas when you have thorough application and you make sure you have both sides covered here make sure you wiggle your paint through on both ends this way you get a nice chiseled edge that's fully coated. And what this allows us to do is when we come up here and start pushing down, it allows the paint to easily come off in that nice way. So let's load that up and let's go up to our canvas and paint a happy little tree here. So what we learned last time is just throwing a basic trunk idea here. I'm just gonna throw something right there to give me a generalization of where I wanna put something. And then I'm gonna come up here and I like to go nice and slow. And this helps a lot with how my tree is going to take a formation so just start tap then on the left tap right and just work my way down and what i'm allowing to happen is i'm letting those bristles actually bend as i come down and out and i go down and out and if i want to fill in the center more i just zigzag left and right and then i come down and out down and out and then maybe zigzag out a little more body, come down and out. And I start working my way out away from the center of my tree to give it a little more girth and fullness. And when you get really close to the bottom here, you see all those different colors start coming out. You can see some of the lizard crimson, the Van Dyke brown, but we've got this beautiful, beautiful dark color. If you run out of color, feel free to flip over, but I'm still happy with what I have. And I'm just allowing these bristles to bend down and out as I work my way over around this tree. And there we've got one happy tree. See how easy that was? Just come back up here and load again. Wiggle that brush through, make sure you get it nice and coated. There we go. Don't be afraid to push down on those bristles. And let's put one more over here. I'm gonna put them a little slanted because they're gonna be connecting, let's just say. So I'm gonna give them a nice little slant. Just has to be visual enough for me. Come up here and turn, just let me get in our basics. And small little tap, 
small little tap, a little more pressure, and just keep tapping down and out. The angle of attack is gonna what form your tree. So it's completely up to you on how you want this tree to look. Maybe it just comes right in front of there and goes a little wider out. Now, if you didn't get a good chance to see what was happening there, I'm gonna put just an extra tree here. And what I'm gonna show you with the camera is just how the bristles are bending. These bristles are coming in dramatically from my right hand side and I bend my bristles down or my brush down. And as I first start tapping, there's not much of a bend. And then as I work my way down, I start allowing these bristles in the brush to actually bend. So I'm gonna over exaggerate here and bend and bend and bend. And as you understand the control, you can start bending them to your will. So you just bend the bristles, bend the bristles. And that's what helps keep shape. A lot of us will come flat and go like that. And this is how we get big old blobs coming down here. And we don't want necessarily that. We wanna have these beautiful angled shapes. So that's all I'm doing is, is you wanna make sure you let those bristles bend to create that shape. So bend, bend. Now I know it's leaving those blobs here, but when you do it in small successions, that's how you get all those beautiful shapes. You wanna make sure you let those bristles bend all the way through. And that's how you get beautiful texture on these trees. Now you probably notice I have two colors up here for our highlights. We've got magic white and cadmium yellow. If you mix these two together, you're gonna get a beautiful little highlight that goes on the side. But if you wanted to do just snow, you could just use the magic white that's over here. I'm gonna clean off my brush really quick so that way it's all nice and clean so I can mix these two together. So before we put our highlights on there, I'm just gonna show you really quick what a trunk would look like. I'm gonna cover this in my next painting tutorial that we do for trees. But essentially you can mix whatever colors you really want, but best suited is generally Van Dyke Brown with a little bit of white. All you do is just mix it right up here on the canvas or your, sorry, on your palette here. Just get whatever color that you like. And it's a little hard on my paper plate here because I just wanna show you. But all you do is just a general cut just right across that. And you just lay in wherever the paint will grip off and touch your canvas is where your trunk's gonna be. So don't get too worried about it. Just like that. And there you've got a nice little trunk coming through. Sometimes I even like to take what is on the palette and just do a sideways cut that's very light. And you can even come up here like we did our last tutorial and cut straight up and it'll add a little bit of that brown streak right in there so you get a nice one too. That's if you wanna have a nice little barren brown top that comes off. That's a cool little bro tip for you guys. So let's just say we were mixing up our colors here. Let's take a little bit of this yellow on both sides. Take a little bit of that white, mix it over in here. Mixing is key because we need to get a consistency that is thinner than what we made down here. So I'm gonna get a nice creamy color up in here for both sides of my bristles. And it's the same technique, just pull it on down. Now you don't need a lot, because if you have too much, you're gonna get blobs at the top here. So make sure you just run it through and push and get all that you need on there. Maybe a little too much in that little corner down there. There we go. We're gonna come up here and you're gonna do every other branch. And go very slowly, because this is all about making highlights, because this is what's gonna pull the tree forward on a three-dimensional plane. So come up here, come side, turn down, and just tap where your highlights should be, just ever so slightly. Just give it a nice little tap, tap, and make sure to cover up that trunk if you were putting them in there. And as you get to the bottom of the trunk, or sorry, of the tree, not as much light shining through so I don't push as hard and then I like to come up like we did in our first tutorial and just clean up some spots and maybe push in some harder spots because when you mix these tones together you almost get an extra color on here giving it more shape and I'll flip my brush over here and let's do this little guy just a little light there maybe coming down push a little harder there get a little more light
This guy's on the exposed side, so maybe he gets a little more sunlight than the other guy. Come up here, I'm gonna flip my brush because it's got a little sharper edge on the other side. And just tap in a little smoothness on some sparks. And that's pretty much it. And let's just say there was a, this was a foothill right here. Just a little bit of light coming down across. Just a little bit, just for fun, why not? But you wanna make sure you don't do any of the boldness that is like that. That's how people get too much of a highlight on here. And it's an over-exaggeration because then you get all your muddy colors. You wanna make sure you keep it nice and light, nice and light, and you get a real effective tree in there. If you wanted to clean off your brush, you can even come up here and add a little more highlight if you want of just a little bit more white. And these are just like little spots that kind of had a little bit of a zinger in them that kind of caught the sunlight there. So I'm just gonna come up in here, wiggle my brush through, push in a little bit so that way I get a little bit of paint on there. Get a little much, I'm just gonna wipe it off there. And let's just say, even though I did every other branch, I'm gonna do even less this time because it's just a little bit. A little there, a little there. Maybe it caught some right there. It's all these little extra details is what pulls out a painting here. You might not be able to see them, but when you paint them and you get up close to your painting, people will notice these. And it's not a stark white for me. Maybe the grass just hits right there. Maybe a little bit back here too. And we got a beautiful little foothill right there too that just came out of nowhere. So you guys can easily see with just a few little strokes, some small dabbing and working your way down and using these instructions and tips, you can easily make a very normal happy tree. Now this is lesson number two. I plan on doing a lesson number three and maybe even beyond because a lot of people ask questions about, well, what about different styles of trees or birch? or uh, different ways to lay in branches or highlights and stuff like that. But I thought this would be just a, a general way. This is a way to get you guys on a level playing field because trust me, it goes a lot more in depth. Normally when I do trees, I don't try to be like Bob. I actually go very slowly and tap them in at my own leisure because each tree is kind of individual and I want to have a certain feel and look and maybe even some different colors from layer to layer. So hopefully this guys, this really helped you out. If you guys like this video, go ahead and give it a nice thumbs up or better yet why don't you leave me a comment put happy little trees down there because it'll make me nice and happy knowing that you like the video if you guys want me to teach you anything else feel free to leave a comment below if you guys want to see any of the supplies i use they're also listed below so that way you guys can continue your painting adventures you can also watch me paint on twitch all the time or follow me on my social media on twitter and instagram and make sure to follow this youtube video and give it a nice like and don't forget leave that comment below and i will see you guys in the next painting tutorial next time take care happy trees and peace